walking into Laurie Wilson uh, Park. Drove in on I Dream of Jeannie Boulevard, where that famous show was uh, often filmed here near Cape Canaveral. You can already see this is a much more of a tourist uh, beach. You got your beach rentals and a boardwalk here. You do have a significantly wide dune system, so this is typical of Florida's east coast. Uh, amazing sandy beaches uh, with this barrier dune system and so the study was really comparing this type of area here in Cocoa Beach you can see with the development um, and uh, you'll see a lot more tourists here later today it's early in the morning uh, hotels and apartments right on the beach uh, versus north of uh, NASA uh, which is off that way and we were comparing a less, much less developed area north of NASA where there's Canaveral National Seashore and parks. We're at Canaveral National Seashore and uh, it's Sunday, so slightly crowded. And you can see in the distance NASA and uh, it's a little windier as well. This is our study sites and you can see here there's no development. And in the background you see Mosquito Lagoon part of the Indian River Lagoon system. I'm just behind the uh, sand dunes now and you can see here, other than the parking lot, um, you don't have the same type of development at all. Uh, you got NASA there, uh, the Space Assembly, Space Shuttle Assembly Building and uh, you can see back behind here is what the habitat would have like looked like had uh, all that development and houses not been happening uh, there at Cocoa Beach. Uh, and we are looking uh, for nurdles. And these are plastic pellets that are part of the uh, chain of production of plastic products and they get out into the open ocean and in rivers and lakes. And um, there they end up washing up on these beaches. Our methodology was simply to walk along this high tide strand line. Uh, you can see a sea turtle nest there. Uh, as an aside, Florida is one of the most important sea turtle nesting areas uh, in the world. And looking uh, for microplastics, in particular the nurdles, uh, in this high tide strand line, it's a methodology that is uh, promoted particularly by Phaedra and the great nurdler. Um, it's easy for citizen scientists people from small age to uh, as long as you can walk uh, you can do this method and you're basically just counting the number of nurdles that you find um, over a certain set time and we use 15 minutes as a standardized time but then uh, we allowed to vary the number of uh, people who searched you can see here some of the struggle <laughs> you got uh, tire tracks uh, some of these beaches uh, people can drive on, not this one, but this is probably from the uh, folks that are monitoring the sea turtle nests or the lifeguards uh, they drive. and So that does complicate things at times. And also when people start setting up their gazebos and towels. Uh, so the tourist beach is a lot more difficult in terms of some of the uh, impacts and things that can change what you find. One of the things that we uh, found in our 135 nurdle samples uh, was about an average of 20 nurdles uh, per 15 minutes of searching and with a range of 0 to 330. We didn't find uh, any statistically significant difference between our sites uh, north and south of uh, the Space Center. Um, and so that's likely due to the temporal variability. So we did find a pre and post hurricane difference. Uh, we did some monitoring at four sites, this being one of them here at Cocoa Beach and uh, south, and then four sites in the National Seashore north of NASA. And there were significantly more nurdles uh, after hurricane season than before. And we actually were also able to sample uh, right after Hurricane Dorian in September 2019. And that was our uh, biggest, um, our greatest average of uh, nurdles. And so we see the real impact of storms uh, and waves bringing up uh, nurdles onto these seashores. 
There's a very important educational component to this project, and that's why we use the citizen science approach. And so we were able to work with uh, elementary school students all the way up through university for their volunteer hours and high schools here. Uh, we worked also with some churches, getting them out, uh, trying to expose them uh, to science and to the issue of microplastics. And we were also able to uh, talk to some of the beachgoers. Often when we're sitting there searching as a group, people are coming up and asking what we're doing, and it gives us an opportunity to talk to them about microplastics.